quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. I'm answering your questions about what the Jets are going to do this offseason at the most important position on the field. Today on the Locked On Jets podcast. You are Locked On Jets. Your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, this is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Wednesday, February 15th, 2023, and I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com. Thanking you for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. This podcast is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. If you like what you see or hear, hit the subscribe button where you are watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you're listening on a podcast source, please give the show a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help out the podcast and help other Jets fans find Locked On Jets. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. And our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo code LOCKEDON, all caps, in the game. Well, today we have our weekly mailbag show. Thanks so much to everybody who sent in questions. And unsurprisingly, most of our questions today are about the quarterback position. And you probably saw it, that Derek Carr was cut by the Raiders on Tuesday, completely expected. The Jets have inquired about Aaron Rodgers. The two big names are both out there, and Jets fans want to know about them. And our first question is about Derek Carr. John, I know you've stated that you prefer Derek Carr because he could be here for a longer term, but because he's going to be a free agent, there are many teams that will be able to bid on his services, therefore driving up the price. Surely, at certain at a certain price, Carr will not make sense. At what point would you say Carr just costs too much money? Now, that's a great question. And yes, I do expect Carr is going to be very expensive. But you know, here's the way I view it. There's nothing the Jets need more than stability at the quarterback position. And that's not just true for 2023. That's true going forward. If you can get a guy who's going to be here, you know, three, four, five years and provide, if not elite level play, but at least quality play, the type of play that you can live with, the type of play, the quality of play that you can win with, that's worth an awful lot. And I think that when we approach free agency, there are many instances where teams should really be focused on whether a player is a good value financially. Whether I think you put a dollar figure on each player and you say, this player gives us this amount of value. And we should not go any higher than this. And that's typically what Joe Douglas has done for the Jets. Unfortunately, his free agent approach, while good on paper, has not really paid off in terms of results. I, I think that there's something to be said for having a lot of fiscal discipline for the most part in free agency. But there are some cases where something is such a pronounced need for your team that even if a player on paper is worth a certain amount of money, you should probably go above it just to land what you need. For the Jets, there's just, there's, there's just nothing more significant. You know, for most teams, is Derek Carr going to be worth, I don't know, $40 million? Pro- you know, he might not be. But for a team like the Jets, the difference between, you know, Derek Carr at $40 million and, I don't know, maybe Jacoby Brissett, and I'll throw out a number, you know, $10 to $15 million. You know, Brissett, you could argue, is a better value on paper, but for what the Jets need, is Brissett going to provide that degree of stability? I don't think he will. So even though, you know, in a vacuum, and if all things were equal, you could say that the cheaper option was better. For the Jets, Carr gives you something that I think really none of these other options can. And it's not that I love Derek Carr. It's not that I think he's an elite level quarterback. It's not that I think he's necessarily going to lead the Jets to a championship. But he can build. He can help the Jets build for the future. He can help kind of be the bridge to the next great Jets young quarterback, and that's where his value comes in. So, you know, if we're talking dollar figures, I always like to go to the website OverTheCap.com, and they have this great section where they actually have a historical uh, list of what players have received in, in not just free agency but in contract extensions. And one of the reasons that this tool is so great is it actually tells you what percentage 
of the cap the player's salary was at the time he signed it. Because it's not just, you know, it's not, it's apples to oranges to say, you know, a couple of years ago, Josh Allen got a, a contract, you know, around, I don't know, 40, 41, 42, 43 million dollars a year. Therefore, you can't go higher than that because the cap was lower then. So Josh Allen was taking up a lower percentage of the cap when he signed that his current contract with Buffalo. So it's better to see what percentage of a cap a cap a player could get. And Carr's last deal, he got around 19.4% of the salary cap with his latest contract with the Raiders. So that in 2023 terms, that'd be around $43 million. Now that's an awful lot of money. And again, I think you could make a pretty fair argument that Derek Carr may not be worth that amount of money. I wouldn't be shocked if he got that, though. To be honest with you, I wouldn't be shocked. I'm, I'm not sure I'd expect it. I'm not sure it's the most likely scenario, but I would not be shocked if he went a little higher. Now, when we get in excess of that figure, then I start to get a little uncomfortable. We get a, above $43 million to 44 $45 million, you know, if we go even higher, I start to feel really uncomfortable because that's the point where you could really see this turning out negatively for the Jets. But I think that even in that case, I'd still be in wait and see mode because, again, what Carr brings to the table, I think, is just something that's so important for the Jets franchise. It's something that would be so beneficial somebody who could give you a solid quarterback play and again even if he technically he's not worth the amount of money even if you'd say that's a bit of an overpay what you're getting is just so valuable that you know it's difficult to put a dollar figure on it now yeah we get to 50 million dollars i i really would question what the jets were doing each dollar above 40 million i i like it less and less but it's one of those situations where i feel like it's maybe an overpay you could potentially live with our next question, this is a bit of a random question, but would Carr count in the compensatory pick formula, even though I'm not expecting the Jets to get a compensatory pick? So what this question is about is the NFL's compensatory draft pick system. And the way, if you're not familiar with the compensatory picks, the way it works is every season the NFL gives out 32 additional draft picks. And they go to teams that lost more in free agency than they gained. So essentially, they have 32 picks. The team that lost the most gets a third round pick. And typically, the way it does, the way it's uh, allocated, a lot, of, a large percentage of this formula is just based on the players that you lose, and the quality of the players you lose is determined by the salary. So the team that loses the player that gets the highest salary in free agency gets a third round pick. It gets the highest third round pick, and so on. And you know they have picks all through, you know, go through day late day two into day three. They have fourth round picks, fifth round picks, sixth round picks. Um, you know, the, the earliest compensatory picks in the third round, then they just give out picks in each round after that. Um, so that's, that's what the compensatory pick formula is. And it's kind of weird because most of the NFL is built to try and improve the bad teams, but that's like the one, that's like the one formula where they actually benefit the good team because the good teams are the ones that lose more players than they gain in free agency. Now to answer the question, does car factor into this? The answer is no. And the reason for that is compensatory picks do not involve players who are cut. And that's true of players that you sign. It's true of players that you lose. If you cut a player, it's only it only applies to players whose contract has expired. So does not apply to a player you cut. So the Jets would not lose in the formula because, again, part of it's you have to lose more than you gain. So if you sign a player, uh, you lose out in the compensatory pick formula. And you can't just cut players to try and get compensatory picks. It doesn't work that way because the players the players who are cut just do not factor at all. And the other thing I think I should make clear is you get the pick a year after you lose players. So the compensatory picks that are being given out this year were for free agency in 2022. The compensatory picks that will be given out for the free agents gained and lost this year, that will be next year. So that's another thing just to keep in mind when we talk compensatory picks. Now, head here on the Lockdown Jets podcast. We will continue with our weekly mailbag show. We're going to talk Aaron Rodgers, and I've been making an assumption that Aaron Rodgers is probably only going to play another year or two. What if I'm wrong? Is there a way the Jets could guarantee it? Let's talk about it as we continue this Wednesday episode of the Locked On Jets podcast. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. You've heard me talk about this mobile game app, and it's a lot of fun. And now it's your turn to compete. 
More on that later, though. Have you ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise? Well, your dream can definitely come true, and this game's definitely for you. You manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through seasons, and lead your team to glory trying to build a dynasty. How will you, you, how will you handle your quarterback situation? Will you be as good as Joe Douglas this offseason? You can find out, because with Ultimate Football GM, you're responsible for controlling the destiny of your franchise by hiring the right coaches and coordinators, trading players, and navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft and all the ups and downs of the season. And all this comes in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is free and available online to play. You can play on the go as you want and when you want to. And we've created a lockdown league for you to compete against lockdown fans all over the world. Can you be the ultimate locked on football GM? Choose the locked on league right now in the app to join. Can you create a football dynasty? And locked on Jets listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo code locked on all caps in the game store. Again, that's locked on in all caps. So make sure to check it out today. And to download the game, just visit ultimate gm.com or look it up on the app stores. Again, that's ultimate gm.com. Ultimate football GM. Start your dynasty today. Thank you again for making Locked On Jets your first listener, first watch every day. This podcast is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Let's continue with our weekly mailbag. Next question is about Aaron Rodgers. John, you've been pretty clear that you think Aaron Rodgers is only going to play another year or two. But what if the Jets could entice him financially and guarantee he's going to play three years while getting Rodgers to guarantee the Jets he'll play at least three years? Well, you know, if they could do it, then... If there was a way to do it, I might have a different opinion on trading for Aaron Rodgers because I'm not a big fan of it. I think it's, you know, for a two-year rental, I think just it's going to be too expensive when you're talking the draft picks the Jets are going to give up, when you're talking about the salary the Jets are going to have to give him because there's going to be a lot of dead money after the two after two years if Rodgers retires. And I think, you know, part of what makes this complex for the Jets is their entire financials, their, their entire, entire financial setup was essentially factoring in the idea that Zach Wilson was going to be the starting quarterback in 2023. So they, they did not budget much money for the quarterback position. They essentially loaded up the rest of the team, at least as far as contracts go, maybe not so much as far as talent goes, but they essentially budgeted very little money for the quarterback position this year. So that means you have to go into 2023 with a small quarterback cap hit, and that means you're going to push quarterback cap hits into the future. If you get somebody like Derek Carr for four to five years, it's a little bit easier. It's a little bit of a, a it's a little bit of a less st- st- uh, less steep of a slope because you can stretch the hit out over a longer period of time. Whereas with Aaron Rodgers, if he's only here two years, then you're going to get hit. You're going to get handed a huge bill. So it makes it trickier with Rodgers. And I guess the the problem is I don't know how you would guarantee that he's going to be here for three years because first of all, he's shown himself to be kind of erratic. And beyond that, I, I think the Jets, as they're acting right now, they seem kind of desperate for him. So I don't know that the Jets really have a lot of leverage to try and get Rodgers to commit to three years or longer. I, I think that's awfully tricky because the Jets want him so badly. And Rodgers doesn't need to play. If Roger, and if Rodgers wants to continue to play, it doesn't have to be in New York. So there's really nothing the Jets can do to force him to play for longer unless they gave out just a ridiculous contract. You know, his contract right now is pretty ridiculous, but I guess they could give him out even an even more ridiculous contract. I don't think that would be a good idea, though. I think you'd just be, you just have the same problem maybe a year or two later. Beyond that, even if Rodgers promised it again, I mean, he's liable to change his mind. This is a guy who's shown the last two to three years that he'll, he'll change his mind at pretty much any moment, and he's liable to completely do a 180 on what he was going to do because... You know, last year he was dead. He seemed like he was completely set on leaving Green Bay, and then suddenly he signed an extension with the Packers. Beyond that, though, I, I do think there's a question of how much longer he can play at a high level, and I think that maybe Tom Brady has distorted our perceptions of what's realistic as far as the aging process of a quarterback goes. Because Brady's been, you know, Brady stayed great up until his mid 40s. I mean, this year was really the year where things began to really fall off. Uh, you know, prior to that, there was there were signs of decline, but he was still near the top of the league. Whereas, you know, finally, you know, 45, 46 is when Brady fell off. I don't know, even in today's day and age where quarterbacks don't take a lot of hits, where roughing the passer is regularly enforced. I still don't know that you can expect a quarterback to be great in, in late into his 40s. You have to remember Brady's workout regimen, Brady's nutritional habits. 
one of a kind. And I think that's one of the reasons he aged so well. Rogers, I don't know that he's got the same focus on that stuff. So I, I and I can name you other quarterbacks. I, I mentioned this last week. You know, you talk about guys like uh, Drew Brees, who was a great quarterback, or Philip Rivers. I mean, they showed real signs of decline. Matt Ryan, right now, guys who have shown signs of decline in their late thirties, you know, maybe early forties. So I don't even know if you'd want to do that. I, I don't know that you'd necessarily want Rodgers as more than a rental. I, I think it's tricky. I think it's tough. So I, I don't see a way to do it. I don't know that it would be the best. Uh, option for the Jets. Our next question, would it not make sense if Rodgers stays with Green Bay for the Jets to trade Zach Wilson for Jordan Love? Doesn't that make sense for both teams? I think that Green Bay might have to trade Jordan Love if they keep Rodgers. You know, it's funny because Green Bay, I think, was proactive when they drafted Jordan Love, and I kind of liked what they did. And the, ir- the ironic thing is, like, as much as Green, Green Bay got criticized for drafting uh, Rodgers' replacement, a couple of years ago, and th- those were the exact same criticisms Green Bay got when they drafted Rodgers himself back in 2005. People said, well, why why would you not help Brett Favre out? Why would you draft his replacement? The question is whether the player is good or not. And I do think the way Rodgers has acted the last couple of years has vindicated the Packers from the standpoint that they were probably right to th- start thinking about life after Aaron Rodgers, and they were probably right to try and find a replacement. It's just they may have drafted the wrong guy. If they had drafted a better quarterback, if they had drafted the next Rodgers, you know, maybe things would be a little bit different now. So it, it, you never know how these things are going to go when you draft the, the quarterback to replace your, your starter. You know, sometimes it works out. Uh, sometimes it's a situation like Green Bay had when they drafted Aaron Rodgers, even though they already had Brett Favre. Sometimes it's a situation like New England where you draft Jimmy Garoppolo and you don't realize Tom Brady's going to keep playing for as long as he did. Sometimes you have a situation like Denver in the 1990s. They drafted Tommy Maddox uh, to replace John Elway. And Maddox did not really pan out. And, you know, they kind of soured Elway's relationship with the coach. Um, and it, Maddox ended up being traded. and It just turned into a kind of an awkward situation. But you also have situations like the Miami Dolphins in the 1990s where they never really thought about life after Dan Marino. And really, I mean, maybe Tua Tagovailoa is finally the guy, but they've been pretty much searching for a replacement from Dan, from Dan Marino since Dan Marino retired in 99. So it shows you there's never really a right or wrong way to do these things. Now, as far as the question goes, would it make sense for the Jets to trade for Jordan Love and send Zach Wilson to Green Bay? I mean, I feel like that's kind of like a change of scenery for both guys. Jordan Love has not played much. He's not been very impressive when we when he has played. I don't know how much you can read into that. I mean, I thought mechanically last year when he saw the field, especially that game against Kansas City when Rodgers was out, he really looked like kind of like he was in rough shape mechanically. I mean, I don't think I'd, I'd trade make that trade with the idea that Jordan Love's my undisputed starter. I think you'd have to bring somebody in to compete with him and maybe even still bring in a veteran-type quarterback and make Jordan Love your backup. I mean, I, I don't think it would hurt... I think Zach Wilson has shown that, you know, he's probably not the guy. He's probably not going to be the guy, even if you keep him around. So I I couldn't really complain on that end. But I feel like that would almost be like just making a change for the sake of making a change. I'm not really convinced either guy is going to work out. Again, it it makes sense for the Jets, I think, because I think you bring somebody, you know, everybody makes this big deal out of Zach Wilson idolizing Aaron Rodgers when he was a kid. What, I don't think it necessarily follows that Zach Wilson is going to turn into a better quarterback because he, he backs up Aaron Rodgers for a couple of years. It's been suggested if the Jets get Rodgers, I guess it, the other way, if Wilson goes to Green Bay, I, I don't know that's going to work out for Zach. I think for the Jets, I mean, would I rather have Jordan Love than Zach Wilson? Yeah, I think I probably would. I think for the Packers, you probably have to trade Love if you keep Rodgers. So I think from that standpoint, it makes some sense. I just don't know that this is necessarily the type of move either team's going to used to get their long-term quarterback. I think it's a perfectly reasonable ex- pers- per- perfectly reasonable idea. I don't think it's a situation where either team, however, is going to get a guy who's going to be starting for them in five to ten years. Now, here on the Locked On Jets podcast, we're going to close out our weekly mailbag. We're going to continue to talk about the quarterback position because it's all anybody wants to talk about. And we're going to discuss the ramifications of Derek Carr's contract if he signs with the Jets. That's ahead here on this Wednesday mailbag edition of the podcast. This episode of Locked on Jets is brought to you by FanDuel. Uh, the NFL season's now officially over. Super Bowl 57 is in the books. The Kansas City Chiefs have won the championship for the second time in four years. 
but there's still plenty of sports action going on. We're at the midway point of the NBA season, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new p- customers get a no sweat first bet of up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. And download the FanDuel Sportsbook app now. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores, and three is drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet of up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports book partner, uh, official sports betting partner of the NBA. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on our Wednesday mailbag show. We continue. It's another question about the quarterback position. John, I know you've said you're in favor of Derek Carr potentially signing with the Jets, but it will cost a big contract. And you look through recent NFL history, for the most part, it's been either superstar quarterbacks or quarterbacks on rookie contracts who have helped lead their team to the promised land. Do you have any concerns with signing Derek Carr to a big contract? Well, that's a very good point, and I think it is difficult to win a Super Bowl, especially when your quarterback's not on his rookie contract, unless you're getting somebody like you know, Mahomes or Brady or you know, somebody along those lines. Because if you if you get some, something like that, that, those guys lift their team on the back. If you have somebody on the rookie contract, maybe you're not going to get quite that level of play, but because you're paying your quarterback so little, you can load up the rest of your roster. So in that sense, Derek Carr's kind of the worst of both worlds. Here's the problem, though, with the argument against Carr. You're not getting that MVP quarterback. And you're not getting, you you know, I don't think the Jets are going to draft somebody this year. I think they should. But even if they do, I'm not sure I'd want to rush that guy into the lineup. So you're not getting Derek Carr in place of a Patrick Mahomes. I guess you could argue you may be getting him in place of an Aaron Rodgers, but there are other factors there. I mean, I don't think Aaron Rodgers necessarily makes the Jets a Super Bowl team the next two years. So you have to consider what the alternatives are. The, the alternative is probably not like an MVP level quarterback. Cause I'm not sure. I'm, I think Aaron Rodgers' MVP days very well might be over. And the alternatives, you know, might not be a rookie quarterback who's capable of winning right now. The thing about the Derek Carr signing is if you sign him to like a medium term deal, I'm not sure you necessarily need to win a Super Bowl in those years for it to be a success. You need Derek Carr to help move your team in the right direction. And then, hand it off to maybe the quarterback you draft in a year or two. And again, I, I've talked about this is how Kansas City did it when Andy Reid first arrived. You know, they, they had Alex Smith for a number of years. He kept them competitive, but he never got them over the top to the Super Bowl. It needed to be Patrick Mahomes. And once Patrick Mahomes came, Alex Smith kind of handed things over to him. And Mahomes took Kansas City to the, cho- to the, top, to the top. So that's kind of the... Uh, what I have in mind for Derek Carr. That's kind of the vision I have for him it's not so much that you need to win the Super Bowl. It's that you, he needs to move the team in, in a direction closer to the Super Bowl and then maybe hand it off to the, to the next guy. Whereas you trade for Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you give up multiple picks for Aaron Rodgers and you're loading $60 million of dead money into your future. You have to win the Super Bowl in one of the next two years for it to work out. Otherwise, it's, the deal's a failure. And There are not many deals you could say that about. There really are not many players you could bring in where... You'd say definitively, if they, you don't win the Super Bowl in two years' time, this is a complete failure. It, I don't think that's true of Derek Carr. So when I look at this, I, I do understand the concern. Listen, in an ideal world, the Jets would have that quarterback on the rookie contract playing really well. And this is kind of the consequence of Zach Wilson not working out. Because if Zach Wilson was was good, the Jets would have made the playoffs last year. And we'd be talking about making that next step this year. Maybe we'd be talking about the Jets as a team that could has a, could have an outside chance at making a Super Bowl run this year. It's just that when you have a young quarterback on a rookie contract who doesn't work out, none of the alternatives are that great. I remember right before the end of the season, I kept saying, you know, and I was kind of hoping against hope maybe Mike White could show something because I just did not know what direction the Jets were going to go in at the quarterback position, because there really aren't any great options. As much as I'm talking about Derek Carr, it's not that I think Derek Carr is a fantastic option. It's just of the options that I think are flawed, he's maybe the least flawed, and maybe the one that's most conducive to the Jets getting where they need to go. Not that, it's not that I think this is phenomenal paying Derek Carr potentially $40 million a year. It's just, I, I like all the other options a lot less. 
Anyway, that's all for today's episode. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you're listening on a podcast source, please give it a five-star review. If you're watching on YouTube, please give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help the podcast out and help other Jets fans find Locked On Jets. Hope you have a great Wednesday, everybody. We'll be back back tomorrow to talk more Jets.